Hello, today we'll talk about condition variables. In last two videos, we have talked about how to use mutex to synchronize the access of common resource among the threads. Today we'll talk about another synchronization issue, which using mutex alone cannot help us to solve the problem. Let's look at our example. The main function is pretty simple. It, cre it creates two threads, thread 1 with function 1 and thread 2 with function 2, and then wait for the two threads to finish. Let's look at thread 1 and thread 2. First, there's a global variable q, which is a deck of integer, and there's also a mutex. The thread 1 has a while loop. It pushes number into the queue and then sleep for a second and then go to the next loop. Thread 2 also has a while loop. It keeps checking if queue is empty. If it is not empty, it, it pops off the data and then print it out. Otherwise, it goes to the next loop. So thread 1 is the producer of the data and thread 2 is the consumer of the data. And for both thread 1 and thread 2, before they go ahead and access Q, they'll lock the mutex. This is good because Q is a shared memory between thread 1 and thread 2. So if the access of Q is not synchronized with a mutex, then there will be a data race. So this is good. However, there is another problem. The thread 2 is in a busy waiting state. It keeps checking if Q is empty. And if Q is empty, it will unlock the locker and immediately go to the next loop. So it will keep looping. We all know busy waiting is very inefficient. How can we make the program more efficient? One way to do that is if the queue is empty, we let the thread to take a nap, and then go to the next loop. This will largely reduce the number of looping. But the problem is, how do we decide on the time duration of its nap? If the time is too short, then the thread will still end up spending a lot of time looping. If the time is too long, then it may not be able to get the data in time. So it is very hard to find the best number. This is where the condition variable comes in. In addition to the mutex, we also need a standard condition variable, cond. And in thread 1, after it has pushed the data into queue and unlocked the locker, it will call cond notify1. This will wake up one thread, if any, that is waiting on this condition. And in thread 2, we don't need all these garbages. We only need to call cond.wait locker. This will put thread 2 into sleep until being notified by thread 1. So condition variable can enforce that the thread 2 will go ahead and fetch the data only after thread 1 has pushed the data into the queue. In other words, it can enforce certain parts of the two threads to be executed in a predefined order. Now why does the wait function need the locker as a parameter? Remember, at this point, the mutex is locked by thread 2. And a thread should never go to sleep while holding a mutex. Because you are going to sleep, why do you need the mutex? You don't want to lock everybody out while you are sleeping. So, before the wait function put thread 2 into sleep, it will unlock the locker, and then go to sleep. 
and once thread two is waked up by the notify one function, it will lock the locker again, and then continue to accessing Q. And after that, it will unlock the locker. And since we have to lock and unlock the mutex many many times, we have to use unique lock for condition variable. We cannot use lock guard. So far, everything should be okay as long as the thread two, while in its waiting state, can only be waked up by the notify one function. But actually, that is not the case. The thread two can wake up by itself, and that is called spurious wake. And if it is a spurious wake, we don't want the thread to continue running. We want to put it back to sleep again. So the wait function can take another parameter, which is a predicate that determines whether the condition is really met for the thread to continue running. And in this case, we'll use a lambda function. If Q is not empty, so if thread two wakes up and found that the Q is empty, it will go back to sleep again. If the queue is not empty, it will go ahead and pop off the data. Another thing to note is, there could be more than one thread that is waiting on the same condition. And if that is the case, when you call notify one, it only wakes up one thread. If you want to wake up all the threads that is waiting at the same time, you should call con notify all. That will wake up all the threads. So with condition variable, we can make sure that threads are running in a fixed order for a certain portion of their code. In this example, the thread one will push the data into queue first, and then notify thread two to running, and then thread two will pop off the data, process the data, and go to the next loop, and waiting for the next data to be available. So this is what the condition variable is good for, to synchronize the execution sequence of the threads. That's all for today. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have, and see you next time.